Sometimes we'd have a dollar limit. They'd always declare, the host would always declare what it was. But it was the dollar change now, a two dollar limit, or four. On my left was Charlie Pace Lockton. On his left was little Johnny Baggin, the baseball player. On his left was, uh-huh, thank you. On his left was T.P. Lee. And on T.P. Lee, T.F. Woodard's, 
Come here, brother. That was old Jim McLean. Come here. And I reached on the table just like that, maybe just a little bit bigger. I reached out and picked up my hand and just looked at it like that, and I saw three aces. And he had the rule there's no wild card. He had the rule that four aces be the king high straight flush. So the four aces be high hand. I looked at that, and it was $37 in the pot. Uh, old man Jim McLean was here. And I just reached out and slipped in $50, one, one yellow chip, $50 chip. Got the car, the car looked at his hand, raised the 200, around T.P. Lee, a Johnny Bag and threw his hand away, and T.P. Lee skimmed his check like that, and said, Hamilton says, you don't want to play. And he had a word, said, well, now you go ahead and bet. And he raised it $300. When it got back to me, I didn't have, uh, I was the only poor boy in the bunch of us, I was a millionaire, and I didn't have anything. Got back to me, and I said, well, I call all the guys. I told him on the side, and we, uh, as usual, he got up and counted off the side money and fixed up and everything. And when Jim McClain says, go all over him, when Jim McClain says, go all over him, all the time, all the time, all the time, when he couldn't have learned something, he threw up a clear heart. And he said, Card, and I had the other ace when I ended up my two cards, two two cards, and he had with us one of the book, and he said, I was so there, and just picked it up, picked it up, and I was betting five hundred dollars behind my hand. I didn't call, but just to call, I wouldn't raise it, I wouldn't take all the call, I just took the call. So I said, well, I got my five hundred dollars, go broke here and out. Carl didn't pay like that, but he was sitting there with a little straight. Thing over with, and I'll be going soon to drink my tea. Oh, you don't want to no hurry up. Hurry. Dad, did you have a lemon tea? Yeah. That's sound horrible. Well, I'm sorry, this you grab me to lunch now. Well, I'm curious to see what this is. Huh? <laughs> it's an experiment. Well, it's good, I'll tell you. Where's the other son in law? Here's one of your daughters, not mad. He had to go back today. We left in Baton Rouge. Oh, is that right? And we just came up for the weekend. And I'm saying, she's going to be out of town next week. I'm going to spend the week in Houston. Good. That's the rush. I had to get town. That's the last to sell. She's gonna stay here and spend the money, and he's going back and get the ball. <laughs> We've got another son-in-law in, in uh, Mobile. That's got a pretty good military record. Oh, is that right? What? Uh, what is he now? Is he on? Uh, he's uh, he's just a civilian. I think he's just an amateur. What branch of service now? Oh, Air Force. Uh oh. Well, haven't you got a son-in-law that was the infantry? Is there, there's a son-in-law over there, the nearest infantry? Well, he's in the Marines. You know, they're so proud that they, they won't call themselves infantry. See, that Marine. Well, my husband was a sailor. <laughs> he doesn't belong to me. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Well, the boy in Mobile is, uh, he got out of the World War II with the distinguished flying cross and a bunch of air medals. And uh, he got into Korea and got out of his life. And then the Korea, I called back in and he got out of that with a, a, another distinguished flying cross. Oh, there's more air medals and the bronze star. Well, let me tell you folks something. If they'll elect me, now start me in line as national commander in 54. And that's what they're going to do, I think, because we're going to have a national convention in Houston in 55. I'll personally see that the United States Congress 
makes the distinguished flying cross eligible for membership in the Army and Navy Legion of Honor. Oh, let's keep it exclusive. Mm -hmm. Many DFCs. Oh, no, there'll be. Uh, we can do this. We can make it with two Oak Leaf clusters or three Oak Leaf clusters. There isn't too many DFCs. There isn't as many DFCs there is DSCs. Huh? Oh, no. Man, no. You well, then I'll trade. <laughs> well, don't trade your don't trade your DSC for anything. And boy, they made a mistake in the paper this morning. Now, don't let anybody fool you that the United States Congress or anybody rates the Congressional Medal of Honor above the above the Distinguished Service Cross. It is not rated higher. The United States Congress. The wording is so different, so slightly different. Uh, and they're all equal places. The Congressional Medal of Honor, the Distinguished Service Cross, and the Navy Cross are all equal. Yes. That is a silver star. Well, it's uh, it's way down the line. It's below a uh, uh, four. No, oh, it's say higher, lower than that. Five or six, probably. The uh, military legion, wait a minute, what is the name of it? Mer uh, legion of Merit Medal is almost in a class with the uh, Distinguished Service Cross the Congressional Medal of Honor. The only difference in the Congressional Medal of Honor and the Distinguished Service Cross is that the Dolly Hoom and Cameron let the President uh, pin that thing around their neck and uh, they allow the Commanding General some post to present this. Mark Clark signed his Distinguished Service Cross. The President signed mine and Jack Parrish. But that was over. Uh, why didn't Jack get the DFC since it was an aerial combat? I think the DFC would be... Uh, it's the way this thing is worded. Why don't you put it on the dictionary? If you don't want to like me to leave, I'll do it, but I don't want to yet. Oh, no, 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 and the DSC was the Army, and the Congressional Medal of Honor was something else like that. When I received the DSC, <coughs> it was rated higher than the Congressional Medal of Honor for this reason. <coughs> you could get the Congressional Medal of Honor in the United States by swimming a creek and stopping an engine or something, and you couldn't get the DSC for anything except a violent action against an armed enemy. <coughs> it changed the wording on the Congressional Medal of Honor, and you cannot win the Congressional Medal of Honor now except for violent action against an armed enemy. Then the United States Congress added the Distinguished Service Cross first, <coughs> and then later, five or six months later, they added the Navy Cross. The Navy started the racket because there was no, nothing for them. <coughs> that they could belong to the Army Navy Legion of Valor. They changed the name of it from the Legion of Valor. It was first Congressional Medal of Honor was the name of the organization. And then Congress changed it to Army and Navy Legion of Valor. After they had put the Distinguished Service Cross in as eligible for membership. And that covers everything, Marines, uh, Air Corps, and everything else when they have the Army and Navy.